Okay, so we're going to go over, um, really just start off with long division of polynomials, and from there we will go into synthetic division afterwards. But before we can do um, long division of polynomials, it's probably a good idea to go over long division from when you were in like fourth grade, third grade, whenever you first learned it. Because a lot of us um, probably don't even think about what we're doing anymore when we do division because it's second nature. So let's talk about long division, fourth grade style, uh, when you were a kid. So say I asked you to divide something like, so my hand's a little bit in the way, let's see what we can do here. Let's say I asked you to divide 100 and, uh, what number did I want to do? 144 divided by 3. I could totally write 144 divided by 3 this way. That would be more like horizontal uh, division where you're going completely sideways. Another way to divide, another important rule is, isn't division the same as you probably, I never really use this phrase, but you guys have probably said the phrase keep, change, flip. Does that sound familiar? I usually would say dividing is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. Is that more like a word or a phrase you've heard before too? Kind of. So it's like dividing by three is really the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and the reciprocal is when we flip a number over. So the flip or the reciprocal of three is really one third. And then when we did the percent word problems, we even talked about what of means. One third of 144, well, of means multiply, right? So to find a third of something, wouldn't you divide it by three? Yeah. You know, so it's like in your head, you know, right? But you never really stop and think about the operations that go with it. You know, it's like kind of just happens, and that's why I'm going over this, because a lot of stuff becomes second nature. Okay, so what else could we write it as? Well, when you're dividing, all right, um, another way it could be written, I'm just writing all the options over here. Maybe it was written 144, which is that one right here that I'm pointing at, over one, and then it was still division, and it was still um, 3, but it would be 3 over 1. Maybe both of these are written as fractions. So then that's 144 over 1 times that's the 1 third. Okay? Or if I have this anyway, how do you multiply fractions? What are the rules? Uh, let's do 144 times 1. Like yeah, 144 times 1, which is 144, over three. 1 times 3, which is 3, right? So do you need a common denominator to multiply fractions? No. No. So we end up with a fraction at the end of the day. Division is a fraction, and the division symbol looks like this, anyway, right? That's sort of like a cartoon division symbol. And a division symbol is basically fill in the blanks for a fraction. Here's where the 144 goes, and that's where the three goes. Now, if we go way, way back to basics, where we did long division in like third grade or fourth grade, think back to whatever teacher you had, you would have something like 144 inside the square root, or square root, listen to me, inside the division symbol, and then you would put the three on the outside. So that should be somewhat familiar. Now, the bad thing is when people say you put the bigger number on the inside, it doesn't have to be bigger. It just has to be whatever's dividing, and whatever you divide by goes on the outside. So think like by, I know this is by, but by, like you say goodbye, like B-Y-E, by, they go outside, they're going to leave. So whatever you divide by goes outside. <laughs> okay? So we're dividing by that. Now, when you were a kid and you did long division, you would check with yourself. You said, okay, does three go into one? So Jairus could be for you too because we're going to do this in a couple days. Does three divide into one? Does three go into one ever? No, so we move over, right? We do it again. Now, could you really have put a zero here and done the whole thing? Yes, but we're going to go over. 3 into 14. How many times does 3 fit in 14? What's 3 divided by 14? Um, Don't get me, like, worried about the remainder part. Like, go back to You're thinking too hard. Think back to when you were a little nugget in, like, third or fourth grade. You were a little peanut, and you were just sitting in the class, and you were like, okay, teacher. I mean, like, yeah, 4 is the most times it'll go. So the important step on the side that should really go with it is like you're really doing on the side 14 divided by 3, and it went in four times. When you were a kid, though, you used the R word. What was the R word with division? Remainder. Yeah, so it went in four times with a remainder of what? Uh, like, 3 goes into 14 four times, but how many are left over? Good, 2. 4, remainder 2, because 3 times 4 is 12, and you still have 13, 14, so 2 more. So sometimes you wrote it like this. Other times... You wrote it as a mixed number. Do you remember mixed numbers? Mixed numbers would be like four and two thirds. Yeah. Okay? It's probably been a while. So this thing right here is a mixed number. Mixed number. And this over here, do you remember what kind of fraction that's called? Uh, improper. Yeah, it's an improper fraction. For it to be a proper fraction, the top has to be smaller than the bottom. If it's the same or bigger, it's improper. So there's my improper fraction, and there's my mixed number. All right, another thing. When you were a kid, your teacher taught you how to change. So we just saw how to change an improper into a mixed number. We divide. And the remainder was above the three that we were dividing by because it didn't divide, right? Mm -hmm. But your teacher showed you a way to go from a mixed number back to an improper. Do you remember how to do that? 
Um, yeah. What did you do? You multiply four times three. Yeah, you did four times three. Um, and then after you did four times three, what else did you do? Subtract it. Wait. Add. What'd you add? You added two. Good. The top number, right? And then here I would get four times three is twelve plus two is fourteen. And what do I do with that fourteen? Put it over the number that was on bottom anyway, three. So it's been a while, right? But you know you did that, and your teacher told you to do it, and you were just like little baby you, were like, okay, and you no questions asked, and you just did it, because the teacher said do it, right, you whatever. But like, I hate this, and I swear, everything I'm talking about matters when we do these polynomials, because there's gonna be a connection with everything. How did you say this number out loud? Um, four over two, three. No, you said four. Oh, four, oh, four and two thirds. Right, four and two thirds, right? Well, here's the issue. Four, I know is four, right? Mm -hmm. Two thirds, I know is two thirds. But to me, we're in high school now, and means plus. I hate that they used to write it like this, when really it is this. Because in high school, when you put stuff next to each other, what operation are you usually trying to do? <laughs> Multiplication, oh. right? Like when you put a number next to a number, aren't you usually multiplying? Oh. It's just this little flimsy dot, but sure, it looks like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then when I get to high school, and sometimes you guys randomly put a mixed number in your paper, all of a sudden you start multiplying, you make it 8 thirds. Yeah. But we just saw it's 14 thirds. You know, so you have to know, is that a mixed number or not? That's why I always tell you guys, leave it as an improper fraction, because this is when you mess up. Now, if it was like this, and you were a little baby you, third, fourth grade, when your teacher was telling you how to change this back to an improper, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I have this as a problem nowadays, and I ask you, can you add 4 and 2 thirds for me? Can you find the addition, do the operation? What do you need when you're adding fractions? We always say you need to find... A, start with it over one, and then, we just add across, no. Yeah, we need a common denom. So what would my common denominator be for these? Three, that's my least common denominator would be three. So I'm gonna multiply this on top and bottom by three, because it's already one, so how do I make it a three times three? The reason we do it on top and bottom is because you're only allowed to multiply by what number? When you change up how something looks, technically, what is this? Well, it's three over three, right? So technically, it's a one in disguise, right? This isn't three over three, one. So it just makes it look different when we're finding a common denominator. But anytime you find a common denominator, so now we're gonna do this with polynomials, with, with um, all these expressions and factors. We're gonna multiply on top and bottom by like x plus three, you know, not just three. Yeah. So here I'm gonna multiply by three. So three times four is 12, right? Three. Over three plus two over three. And then 12 plus two is 14. 14. Over three. But what did we just do? Watch. Didn't you just do, to get your answer, four times three plus two? Yep. Look what you did here. Four times three plus two. So you were low-key doing the math needed to do this. But you just didn't know that that's what you were doing. You were like, I just do what teacher says, and you just did this, right? Like, you didn't know you were adding fractions and using common denominators, not for a second, right? So that right there is really what's going on. We're going to do this to check our answers with our long division, because that'll help us practice adding fractions that have, like, x plus five in it, you know, instead of just five. Okay, so now the process we just did, or we're about to do on this for division, we're going to do the whole time. So we said, we divided 14 by 3, and you guys told me it was 4. Here's 4. After you write it on top, what do you do with the 4? I know it's been a while, but long division, when you find that number on top, what do you do next? Third grade, long time ago. Multiply it by that, and what do I get? 12. 12, and I write it. And then I subtract it. What's 14 minus 12? Two. two. And carry down that four. Now, and that two is really my remainder, right? Uh, but now I brought down the four, because that was just like a side problem there. Two, four is 24. What's 20? So I take the inside number again, 24, and I'm going to divide that by three. What's 24 divided by three? Eight. eight. So that number is going to go up here. Then I take the eight, and what do I do with it? Um, you know in the shampoo bottle how it says lather, rinse, repeat? So it's like you do this thing, you're just going to do it over and over again. So we're going to do the same thing. It's like the circle of life, right? We did got the 12, then we subtracted, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we're here, 24. So I got that. I divided. 8 times 3 is 24. It goes under. And I subtract. And what do I get? Zero. Zero. And that makes me happy because that means I don't have a remainder. If you don't have a remainder, that means 3 and 48 are blanks of 144. What are they? Fill in the blank. 3 and 48 are? What's, it, what's filled in the blank, though? 3 and 48 are blank of 144. 
What are they? When you divide and a number goes in evenly and has no remainder, why does that happen? Because they are factors. Right? They're factors. They're factors oh, of yeah. right 144. Yeah. But it's funny because like I feel like you put this all in one category in your brain, and it's been a while, and now you're doing harder stuff that like sometimes we forget this other stuff that we had learned. So that's why I reviewed this with everyone. So now I'm gonna show you how to divide through the same problem and using the same reasoning and all that. We're gonna divide polynomials instead. So we have an example over here. So example one, long division of polynomials. I'm gonna divide x to the third minus five x squared plus two x um, plus eight. So divide this by this. And I'm gonna divide it by um, x minus 2. So remember I said by, think of the word by, and when you're going to leave and you say by, you have to go outside, okay? So x minus 2 is going to go on the outside, x minus 2, right? And then on the inside, I'm going to put the thing I'm dividing on the inside. Now you really want to spread it out like pretty decent in the beginning until you get the hang of it because you want space. So you'll have x to the third minus 5 x to the second plus 2x plus 8. Okay? I'm going to have a little, little squish towards the end, but still okay. All right, so there is my problem. So you're going to do this in your class in like a week or so, okay? So um, we're all doing this stuff right here. Now, when I divided the 144, we started at the beginning and we divided. But here with the equations here, we're going to look at the leader of each part. So who's the leader inside x to the third? And the leader on the outside is x to the second. So we're really just going to divide those, and then the rest of the problem just goes along for the ride. Okay, it's just like, here I am, following along with a little tail on the back. So I'm going to divide those. Now we said a division symbol is really a fill in the blank. What is x to the third? So the inside is royalty. This is all my castle. Upper class, so it goes on top. Lower class, they don't have a roof over their head. The, those are the peasants, it goes on bottom. What's x to the third divided by x? Well, really, it's just the reducing a fraction. How does that reduce? Yeah, it's x squared. Good. So when I divided those two, so I'm going to keep everything the same color while we do the video over here. I'm going to get x squared. So when you're done dividing, you're going to keep everything. All your work is going to be in nice columns so that we know we're doing it right. We even did columns, if I just slide it back for a second. Here, you were keeping things lined up a certain way. It did matter where everything went. So it does really, really matter here. So everything that's x squared will all go in the same column. It's going to go over here, okay? So my quotient, x squared, is going to go right there. Now... What do I do after I write a number on top? Once you got a number on top, when we did the long division before, what did we do next? We multiply it by? Well, the whole thing. By that whole thing outside, so the x and the minus 2. And once you get the answer for the multiply, where did we write it? Yeah, nope, on bottom. So it's like the circle of life. We're going to get this to this to this, and then we go back around and around and around, okay? So around and around we go. So this times that. What do I get? Good. And then what's x squared times negative 2? Minus 2. Yeah. 2x two squared. You're right. So this right here just multiplied by that and that. We got the answer and it went in that row right over there. Now, there was something I said in class a bunch of times. Kind of rhymes. Not really the best rhyme in the world. You know, I do my best. I'm not a, a songwriter. But I kept saying the same thing over and over and over again. And that thing I was saying, I think this pen should be dark enough, I was saying was parentheses, minus sign, so the word sign is going to rhyme, minus sign, underline, cancel. If you say it enough times to yourself, it'll eventually stick in your head. So that goes here, parentheses, around this, minus sign, underline, Cancel, okay? So, normally when we subtracted, did we put parentheses around this 12? Um, to subtract it, we didn't need parentheses, right? That would have been silly, like we were a little kid, we never used them, but that was only one term, just a 12. Here, because I'm subtracting a whole quantity of stuff, that's why we need the parentheses, and when you have a negative in front of parentheses, what do you do with that negative? To everybody, right? So, now let's subtract, that one canceled. What's negative five x squared? Minus negative 2x squared. Minus negative is 
plus, so what's negative five plus two? Negative three. Negative three, and then the x squared will stay with it. So negative three x squared. Once you got your answer from subtracting, you brought that down, right? You know what I mean? Like you would bring down the next part? Yeah. Plus two x. Then when you add the bottom, we just repeated it again. We did the new line leader. So the new line leader in this problem is the negative three x squared, right? And then divided by that guy on the outside still, right? So three x squared, or negative, over x. And what does that turn into? Negative three, just x, yep. And then once you get that answer, where do I write it? Nope, it goes up top, because it's a circle of life. So we're gonna get negative three x. And if you look at your work, do you see everything that I'm stacking above each other is to the same power? So it's a good hint, you know? So that's the negative three x. Once it's up there, what do I do with that negative three x? Right, by the whole side, yeah? So I'm gonna multiply that by the whole thing on the side. So this is gonna go over here, multiply. I'm gonna write it down there. So I'll get negative three x times x is negative three x squared. And what's negative three x times negative two? Positive? Yeah, positive six x. This is where that step with the parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel comes in. What's two minus six gonna give me? Two minus six. Negative, 4x, bring down the plus eight. Last step, sorry, I'm, I knew the bell ringing, you guys are gonna need to pass, right? Negative 4x, and I divide it by, what am I dividing? The negative 4x by, same thing every time. You always divide it by the leader on the outside. So it's always divided by x, and what do you get? Yep, so that's your last number, where do you write it? Up top, negative four, you multiply it there, Negative 4x plus 8, worked out, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel, and then 8 minus 8 is 0. That would have been your remainder. If your remainder is not 0, the very last step, all you write is plus 0 over, I wouldn't do it for 0, but the thing you were dividing by, which is x minus 2. That's long division in a nutshell. I'll show you how to check it tomorrow or later or something. Okay? There you go.